Hey, oh, welcome everyone to Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and this week we're going to dive into an awesome company um, out of France. Um, I'm joined by the creator of or co owner of Artcade, uh, Kevin. How are you doing today, Kevin? Hi, Joe. Thanks for hosting me in your show. I'm doing well. And you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad you could make it on. Um, there's so much to talk about with what you guys do at Arcade from designing cabinets um, for art pieces and or arcades um, with different local artists, as well as actually moving into the position of developing your own game, um, putting it on an arcade cabinet and actually on an NES cartridge, which I thought was really cool because not a lot of people are doing that. Thanks for that. Yeah, that, that was a crazy adventure. And um, I would be more than happy to explain you the whole picture. Yeah, well, let's let's jump right in then. Um, Actually, before we do that, I just want to remind everybody, um, thanks for stopping out, checking the video. If you guys like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to subscribe, share. Um, it helps the community grow, helps us grow, helps these videos continue to come out. So, Kevin, I want to talk to you about what you do. Let's, let's, let's find out a little bit more about Kevin before we jump into Arcade. So what do you do on, an, on a daily basis? On a daily basis, so Arcade is not my main activity. Um, um industrial engineer so my job is to improve processes and as a side side passion you know i work on arcade games and stuff like that so yes on the on a daily basis an engineer and during the weekend arcade stuff gotcha so let's talk about arcade what is arcade and how large is the initial team that started arcade all right, so we started Arcade more than two years ago with one of my friends. And Arcade is just the merge of two passion we have, art, uh, street art, and, art, uh, and uh, Arcade cabinets. And we decided just to merge those two and create that kind, that, that kind of piece of art. Why, why not, you know, the, the look of retro Arcade is just amazing, and we just decided to bring it back to a, our modern era. And 90% of the time, you know, your arcade is not being run, you know, you're not playing on it. So why not using the side of the cabinet as an art piece? And it's, it's been a crazy adventure so far. Uh, in two years, we have signed up and collaborated with 10 artists. And yes, we are very pleased to see them all over France and uh, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. The the cabinets that really stand out to me, whether they're new cabinets or old cabinets, are the ones that have like just beautiful side art and awesome marquees. I mean, you can't forget them. Um, I'm thinking of, uh, I think it's a Lunar Lander or Mars Rover just has this awesome big battle tank like on its uh, marquee and it looks so cool. Um, I'm curious as to what the arcade scene is like in France because I spoke with a, a game developer a couple weeks ago and he said that there are no arcades in Sweden. So what is the scene like in France? You guys have a pretty robust scene out there? Uh, it's just crazy, you know. Um, three years ago, I would say, the, the, the re retro scene just kicked back, and everybody now is building up their own arcades, so there is a lot of competition. So we stand up on the very high-hand product with premium arcades, so... We made it up from, from scratch on 3D CAD, etc. We work up with uh, talented woodworkers or uh, people that can bend metal. So we work with good people to make very nice uh, arcade. But right now the scene is just crazy. Everybody is just making arcade on their uh, garage. So yeah, just crazy. So, so you guys have a lot, of, a lot of people that are making them at home? Yes, that's that's the thing, you know. Um, okay, an arcade machine pretty much is just two wood panel and some joystick in it, so everybody is able to make some. And so it is pretty much easy. That's where we started, you know, two years ago. Which I just discovered my first uh, arcade Street Fighter game in a bar in Paris, and that was really the first one, the first time I discovered that. Before that, I just grew up with um, living room. Uh, console like SNES and such and that was just a true revelation I said oh man that's just crazy you know your buddy is next to you you are just uh, uh, playing the game with a beer and I, 
and we said, okay, let's let's build up one. And we started in the garage, and step by step, we 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 ended up with a more professional uh, machine, collaborating with talented artists, and and even making our own games. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I guess that that even kind of leads right into what I want to know about, and that's that's Zeddy. I mean. Um, tell us more about developing the game on the NES and I mean, it's just like, why, why did you guys choose to create an NES cartridge rather than just doing the digital download? I know I did see on your, um, your crowdfunding website that you are doing a digital download, but what made you want to put it in a cartridge as well? So two things, um, teams, the, the artist that we collaborated to make the, the game, so the little logo or that is little cartoon. The, the cartoon is painting for more than 20 years all over the world. And he's the first artist that we signed up. Very pleased the guy welcomed us in his studio and he agreed to work with us. And we just giving the very first cabinet we made. And we, we said to him, you know, you have like carte blanche. You can do whatever you want. And the guy just started to dig up in retro games and get, got inspired by Mario. And a week later, we come back and his little character was dressed up as Mario, you know, with the, the blue outfits, the, the little hats. And we were just like admiring his piece, drinking a beer. And we just said, oh, man, just made a storytelling for a game. You know, the, 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 the name of the game was written, stay the game in the train yard and with two pro- protagonists. It is little Zday and a policeman running after him. And we just said, man, this is crazy. You know, this is just the idea of a game. So why not going even further and make the game now? And that was a true venture. I never thought that I would be making games in my life. And that's how we started. So we start to dig up what was feasible for us. Uh, I was very interested by the Genesis, Sega Genesis or the SNES for the graphism and such. But we based really fast that it is very complicated to develop on those uh, console. You have, you need a team, there is more sprites. So you need like a real artist, pixel artist. Then the sound is a lot more different. So you need someone for the sound. The developing is very complicated. So you need more than one person. And for the NES, luckily, everything can be made by one guy. So we found a French developer that was very in for the game he got a lot of uh, every day he got like ask people ask for him to to develop their own game but he was very interested by the artist aspect of the game so we signed up with him and with a very limited team we were able to produce a game so it took us more than a year to make the game again this is not our main activity so either for him also and Yes, with the NES and with one man and the artist, we were able to uh, build up the game. Gotcha. So I guess it it kind of relates more to your vision on why you went this route, but it seems like a lot of your guys' cabinets have a lot of street art influence on them. Where where did you get interested in street art? So, so this is more my partner. You know, I'm very interested in the uh, retro game retro arcade, bring it back to the new era with new technology inside. And he is more influenced by uh, street artists and urban arts. You know, in Paris, we have that everywhere in every street. So he's always interested by arts and we just decided to merge those two things. And that's his, this is our DNA. That's what kept us different from the rest of the competition also. Yeah, I mean the the art on it is really cool, and I I love all the all the designs that you guys have in there. Um, what artists did you guys collaborate with on the game? Because I remember seeing at the end when you have to spray paint the train, you guys have a whole bunch of different artists in there. Are those all artists from France, or are those international artists? This is international. So luckily, you know, at the end of the game, when we develop finished to develop it, the the development uh, the developer said, you know what, guys, you still have some a few more memory rooms for for any kind of sprite and we decided why not you know include or featuring two new guests so some friends some some artists of the of teams some friends of him so we asked them to make a little tag so at the end of the game when you craft your 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 train when you, you paint on it 
you spray your, your graph, you can use different uh, graffiti from other artists and step by step we keep adding and one more and one more and one more and at the end we have 11 street artists, all of them are pretty much related to the to teams there, so the, the main artist of the game. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's cool that you were able to collaborate and bring his friends into the project and just kind of expand on how much art is actually in there. Um, let's talk about the way that you guys are funding the project now. You guys are doing a crowdfunding on Kiss Kiss Bank Bank, which uh, when this video goes live, it should be towards uh, the end of March. I believe you guys should have one more day after this video goes up. Um how how did you guys go about advertising that and what are some of your stretch goals and rewards for those stretch goals all right so that was very new for us you know okay we made the game and now how to make people hear about the game you know how people can talk about the game and discover it so okay we hired a, a consultant a girl that will pretty much help us for the strategy, for the communication. It took us almost three months to prepare the campaign, three whole months. And the first choice was either we go to Kickstarter, which is a huge platform all over the world, or we go for, as you mentioned, a crowdfunding platform in France. And because our game is kind of hybrid, you know, between the art concept and the game, but this is not completely a game, you know, it's very short right now. And I will explain to you later why this is a short run right now. We were scared and many developers in France or publishers told us, don't go to Kickstarter, you know, you will be eaten by all these retro scene, you know, the, all the hardcore players for the retro scene are in America and, and your game is too small so they can just bury you, you know, it's too complicated, too scary for you. So stay for a more local platform. So that's why we picked up uh, France. So the counterpart of that is the um, how to get visible, you know, uh, Kickstarter, I'm pretty sure, uh, uh, Kiss Kiss Bang on, I'm pretty, pretty sure this is the first time you are hearing about the platform. And yeah, I had never heard of it. Yeah, that's it. So very complicated. So in France, we managed to get to work pretty well, so we made up like a, a digital, uh, not a digital, but a press kit that we sent over 150 YouTuber, blogger, uh, retro scene addict, etc. And step by step, you know, they start making some podcasts or videos or interviews or, or article about us. So we we start to okay, people start to get aware of the of the game in France, but. That was very complicated to go outside France. So I've tried some Reddit, NES uh, forums and such, but it was just tiny uh, bottle in the sea, you know, not the massive hit that you can hit with Kickstarter. Yeah, that, I mean, that just sounds smart to stick to something that's more local. It's it's easier to come up in your scene. I mean, you're you're right. The American market is so insanely oversaturated with stuff like this. It is really hard as a developer of a game to like really get your name out. There's that, and and um, um, uh, sorry. So um, yeah, French platform. So. This was okay for us, and and luckily, you know, at the end, the, the national TV start contacting us and say, all right, we are interesting to make a subject about your game, etc. So the visibility at the end is pretty good because the people we reach are people based in France, so it is quite interesting for our main businesses, which is making arcade uh, cabinet, and um, and uh, yes, so. I forgot what I wanted to say about the America, but uh, we are pretty pleased of what we what we've done in France. And yes, we like you just mentioned, we just reached our first stretch goal uh, this weekend. So it is just nothing compared to what you are used to in America. You know, the our objective was just seven seven thousand euros. You know, compared to the hundred thousand dollars that campaign makes in america right. so very tiny um objective why we picked up that because we okay the platform suggested us that this is just an ideal uh, performance you know 
we don't have massing, ma ma massive projects. So we started up slowly. We reached the, the objective in two weeks' time. And just this weekend, we reached the first objective, which is 10K. So we are pretty pleased, you know, with our little arms to, to achieve that. So this is, made, this is roughly about uh, 150 copies of the game that we sold. Not okay. much, but uh, very pleased uh, for the performance. So what, what is the international market looking like for you guys? Um, I'm sure it's probably not terribly hard to move it um, kind of in your neck of the woods. But like overseas, would you guys be considering shipping cabinets overseas or would you be more focused on like you can get like the NES cartridge? Shipping cabinet is okay, it's way too big for us right now. We are just two men building them up. So if tomorrow we want to ship them in America, you know, you just have to fill a full container of arcade just to yep. uh, get a good price for the shipping. Then you have the taxis and all that. So this is a lot of money to put up front. Um, this is way too much. We don't have all, also any footprint in America. I don't know also about the market over there. Um, I know you all have the very nice uh, retro and vintage arcades so that we don't have in France because you were making them at that time. I don't know about, you know, a homemade arcade. I know there is Polycade, but I don't know if there is many other brands over there. So I don't know if that kind of product will fit, you know, I don't know. Um, but about the game, uh, there are the people from Mega Cat Studio that are interested to publish the game in America. So right now we are discussing cons contracts, but uh, I think it is pretty much uh, in a good way, I would say. Yes, pretty much that yeah. uh, Mega Cat will edit the game. Yeah, I mean, I totally understand the idea of shipping. We've we've talked to people internationally, and it is it is very pricey to send a cabinet like that. They're heavy, and you're right; you need to fill a whole container to really get a good deal on it. Um, but that's awesome that you're gonna have somebody producing here in America potentially for you, because I would love to get my hands on the game. Um, <laughs> is there gonna be somewhere that people can get it digitally, like uh, like the Steam Store or anything? Uh, so that is the next objective I have, you know, because right now the game is very limited to uh, NES emulator on your computer or uh, on your NES console. So very limited. I have some people in my family who bought the game, but they cannot even play it. So this is just silly. And having it in the PlayStation Store, or the Xbox Store, yes, that I think it is quite easy, you know, just it is possible. So I, I, I will look up that. Um, I will look up for that, also for the Steam store. So yes, that will be the next stage. Also, the game will be download. Down, you can down, You will be able to download the game from our website. The game will be uh, free. You know that we don't want to make tons of money about this after that. So it will be free, basically the ROM. You can also um, give a donation if you want. And I don't know if you heard about Recall Box. Recallbox is, is like no, RetroPie, so it is an emulator system oh, gotcha. that you play on your Pi. So it, I will offer to them the, the ROM, so meaning that when you download the Red, Recallbox stuff, the game will be on it for free. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I mean, we've talked about the game plenty and the arcade plenty. I'm curious about your history with video games. You briefly touched on like how you used to play some of the classic games. What are some of your earliest memories with video games and where did you really get started? All right. So the very first console I got was the SNES and the game that truly, if I just got stamped in my mind, and there, is, there are two games. One was uh, Ninja Turtle back in time. So yep. just crazy Incredibly with my neighbors. Yeah, with my neighbors, which we were just playing the game. Never finished the game, uh, young or um, um, as a grown-up. Or has got stuck at the same stage, but yes, just remember. The playing. underwater stage. Uh, it was on the pirate boat, you know, um, with the ball. There is two guys with a, a, swir a sword. So it's the, this is yep. the pirate boat. Always got stuck there, you know, low on life, <laughs> a lot of many uh, lives, and then finish up losing. And the second one, I don't know if it's the right name in English, is the Pirate of Blackwater. It's based from an anime, a cartoon. 
And this is sounds, this sounds familiar. Very similar than the Ninja Turtle. So you, this is a side scrolling, and then you just be, beating up uh, people. And then okay. I started playing computer games. You know, uh, when I was what ten years old, Age of Empire with my dad. You know, in a land. And then, of course, Counter Strike. Yeah, I used to play Age of Empire with my dad too. That that game was a ton of fun. Um, yes. So yeah, I mean, I guess that that kind of wraps everything up that I was curious about uh, for you. Um, I'm gonna start that over because my cat freaked out. Um, yeah, that kind of wraps up everything that I was curious about for you. Um, I guess what's left to do is just kind of give us the social media links so that everybody can find you guys. So there is one more thing I would like to say about the game. Okay, few more things. You know, as a backstory. So in a game, okay, let, let me just grab something. Right. So I don't know if you can see it nicely. That's the little guy you are playing with. So again, this is his mascot, his little character that he dressed up as Mario. And in the game, one of the enemies you have to fight are little grandmas. And to kill them, instead of jumping on them, you know, this is forbidden. So if you jump on enemies, you just die. You have to throw to her... Uh, a little cat. And <laughs> what's funny about the grandma is uh, in the street, you know, he's based from the graffiti background. So people are writing up their name on walls in the street, etc., as a vandal stuff, kind of stuff. And the artist told us that usually people just see that and look down and just move on, you know, they like people feeling shame about what's happening, but all people like her, they just come and and start yelling at you, you know, stop <laughs> that. <laughs> and even one of those grandma, she sent the, our artist to the tribunal, uh, tribunal, which is the the court, and the guy has to pay some fine at the end. So he's quite pissed about grand uh, grandmas, and he, it's just. Uh, a, a side joke of why she's in the game. Some other characters as, as, um, are dog handlers. So when you get to the tube in the Metropolitan, instead of selling cats, you just pay them. So you send some little dollars and the guy will let you pass and you can then reach to the train yard. And the train yard is, there's a little story for that. So the, the, the goal of the game is to just paint your name on the massive Metropolitan Metro and there is a policeman running after you and and graffiti people just okay this is the grail the absolute grail of painting your game for your name on the on the train why because okay the purpose of a graffiti guy is just to write your na his name everywhere in the street you know people has to see his name here and there and everywhere and the people from new york they decided and got the crazy idea to put their name on the metro on the tubes and the next day the entire city will see your name you know because your the tube is running everywhere so this is the absolute grade for a graffiti guy but the reward is very expensive you know if you get caught by the police you have to pay tons of money to clean up the the tube so the purpose of the game is to paint your name is to paint your name in the in the in the metro over there and this this also where you get all the guest uh, graffiti. So as soon as you finish up writing your name on the on the train, this is it. Now, like I said, the game is very small because we were a small team developing the game. It took almost a year and a half to get where we are right now. And we had a choice, either keep developing more levels, not knowing if the people or the public would be here, or we can make a campaign, and if the campaign performs well, we can develop a few more games. So the first stretch goal, as I mentioned, is that we're going to develop new levels, uh, a new bus stage with the participation of all the backers. So in a week or so, we'll start making a little forum and asking all the people that help us, OK, what new stage you want, what kind of bus mechanism, and we're going to very quickly develop that and implement it in the cartridge. So some of the idea I just got so far, uh, why not going to New York and 
as a new levels and then you paint on the New Yorker um, train. And another idea that I really like is to use a rocket, you know, the rocket from Tintin, red and white, going to yeah. the moon. So that's yeah. where you, you put your name and, you know, you get very famous at the end because the, the rocket is going to the moon, turning around the earth, and everybody will see and catch your name. So that's just ideas that we might implement in the next chapter. Yeah, I think those are those are awesome ideas for, for what you could add to the game. Um, yeah, I mean, now that you've said that, I mean, really just let us know where people can find you. Where can people um, support the, the crowdfunding as well as where can they follow you on social media? All right. So as you said earlier, the, the, the campaign is about to end. So when you will see that postcast, you will just have two more days to uh, back or participate to the campaign. Then you can pretty much find us everywhere on the socials under Artcade, you know, Art like digital art or whatsoever, and Cade for Arcade. And yeah, Arcade on, on Instagram. Mainly is Instagram. That's where we put all our pictures from shows and exhibitions. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll throw all those links down in the bottom um, so that everybody can find them. Um, you need to check out Artcade. These cabinets are gorgeous and you will definitely enjoy checking them out. Um, I want to thank you again, Kevin, for coming on and talking about the game as well as the business that you guys are doing out there. Um, I hope everything is going well in France. And if you guys like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade uh, one more time, just don't forget to subscribe, share, and let people know about the community that we're trying to grow here. Um, but until next time, peace. Peace.